All right, apparently we're live, so who knew? Lots of changes with the Samsung telephone that I use, uh, update to the uh, operating system and all the rest of it, and I think uh, the apps have changed. The camera app has changed significantly, so I'm using the YouTube Go Live feature, and we'll see what happens. Love the fan behind me. We're gonna switch to the front camera, and we'll kind of roll from there. I have no means of uh, sharing this out to anybody, so uh, I may dash dash down to the other end of the house and uh, pop out a, a share link or something like that. Uh, I may have to just start bringing my laptop in to do these things, which is a bit of a pain. Anyway, here we go. And if you're, if you're commenting, I'd love to, if you wouldn't mind commenting so I can see what I can see, since this is literally the first time that I've used this app this way. Okay, there we have uh, front facing, so that's a good thing. And I can see here's a little comments bubble, so let's pop that up. Uh, live chat, all messages are visible, let's do that. And that's some stupid coloring thing. And share, here we go, wonderful. I don't have to go down the other end, so we'll pop it onto pages manager thing. Wow, it's now reconnecting, okay. And now I'm going to uh, pop it out uh, one more time. Okay, I'm back. All right, let's see. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what you see when I'm uh, when I'm pausing this to uh, to share out the video, but I guess I'll try and watch it later on, and we'll have a look. So a couple of nice new features on too. Uh, I can now mute the microphone, which is nice. And so if I have to have a hack or a cough, that's good. Drinking a very exciting San Pellegrino tonight. And very tangy. Well. All right. Oh, the vid keeps freezing, huh? And it looks like the uh, synchronization is a little faster as well. There, uh, Todd and Co. All right, let's have a look here. Oh, the reason why the vid was freezing was because I was pausing the video to share things out. Yeah, Todd is a doofus. Uh, but adorable, no less. So, here we go. I thought it might be fun to have a look at the initial setup, the victory conditions, the sort of starting positions and the starting losses and stuff like that. And we can um, kind of get after it from there. And, and, and I'm not going to probably play tonight uh, necessarily, but we certainly will have a look at the disposition of everything and kind of go at it from there. Well, this is like a real live stream of commentary here. Okay, here we go. Hey, I never said I wasn't a doofus, Todd. I just said that you were. So if I move the camera over here, hopefully we can see a little better and there's a little less glare. Uh, so if any of you have seen the Autumn for Barbarossa, <coughs> you will recognize the map because I believe it's almost identical other than perhaps this corner here where there's a t another town right here if I recall correctly that uh, was may not have been a victory condition but but there you go uh, that was there and you did you were able to attack up that way I believe anyway uh, otherwise I think it's almost identical so pretty you know, they're getting the value out of the map, out of the maps, right? <clears throat> so the, and also the setup is different, very different. Uh, this must start at some point before the order for Barbarossa SCS game. And I'm not looking to draw any parallels or anything like that because they're two very different systems. And the SCS system is, you know, bulk standard, attack, attacker friendly, roll a bunch of dice and, you know, DG, barrage, DG, overrun, yada, 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 attack, 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 right? It's all pretty vanilla. Doesn't mean it's not fun, uh, especially the one mappers, they, they make good games. Uh, one thing that was different in the SCS version uh, compared to this, I think, anyway, is the air power, because it was random 2D, 2D6 allocation of air, it made the uh, Soviet air very powerful and uh, often overpowered the Germans. 
And at this stage in 41, I don't know that the Russian Air Force perhaps was quite as powerful as de depicted in the game that we were, that I played anyway. So let's kind of let's kind of have a look from top to bottom. We'll, we'll, we'll come from north to south down down the map. <coughs> have a look at both sides, and then we'll have a look at all the different victory locations that are over the map. There's two different colors of. Uh, uh, tokens on the map and we'll kind of go at it from there yes it is an OCS game so this is OCS Smolensk Barbarossa derailed uh well Bill I I, I don't know that it's it may, it may well be a different scale I don't have the game handy to pull out but it looks remarkably similar obviously <laughs> but uh but it all it looks to me like it's covering the same terrain and roughly the same spread as well so i don't know what the what the what the hexes were uh oh okay well that's cool that's what the designer said then that's awesome uh i guess i pulled both games out put them side by side and count the number of hexes from between a and b but we'll, we'll know won't we um in fact, maybe if someone wants to pull up their Autumn for Barbarossa SCS game and tell me how many hexes there are between Orsha and Smolensk, and we can do a comparison. Now, that'd be fun. If I had my laptop here, uh, next to me, I could probably do it myself. But let's have a look. So the initial defensive line runs uh, parallel to and along this sort of highway slash rail line and then of course down to the Denver River and the majority of the forces are these 1111 and 1222 units many of which have taken a step loss and they're two-step units <coughs> uh, and so they're very weak. Uh, one thing that is interesting in this game is that there's, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that okay, but let me zoom up a little bit here. Yeah, this is going to be one of the challenges with with this camera. All right, uh, so these are ta you know, tank divisions, I guess you want to call them that. Uh, they have all these AT benefits, right? They're, uh, they're pretty weak <laughs> 20 combat factors that have lost a step or two and they are uh, one rated for their quality which means they're pretty hopeless and they have a movement rate of three but it will mitigate in the open uh, the 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 doubling of the combat factors for the panzer divisions that uh, that would attack them so you know that's worth something i suppose so the you know there's a really thin line of stuff here uh there's a few guy, a few stragglers sort of set out to kind of slow down the sort of proverbial road bump units uh down along here the only decent there's one decent brigade and it's a 544 parachute unit there it is there uh, those poor guys are stuck sort of here in the marshes on the wrong side of the, the river and they're facing off one, two, three, four divisions of uh, motorized or panzer divisions from the Germans which, which nearly every German division that's currently on the map has lost either one or two units and it's typically their recon unit and then one battalion of, let's see if I can show you here uh, so, for instance, the third Panzer. Let's see if I can find their other guy. Oh, here we go. So here's his seventh Panzer. This is a typical loss profile. Uh, one battalion of the recon, uh, and then one, and one battalion of the uh, of the of the of the German tanks of some some type. There they vary in value from six. There's an eight in there that's been lost. Uh, so you can see the dead pile. I'll show you the dead pile. The opening situation dead pile is pretty nasty. Let's just have a look. And sometimes, I, you guys, I'm not sure if I can scroll back to look at the comments. Well, there we go. So scale's pretty close. 16 hexes for 12 hexes. No, well, there you go. 16 hexes for OCS and 12 for... So it's very, very similar. Uh, 
That's the dead pile for the Germans. And the Russians, you know, obviously have a lot of units that are isolated and being rounded up and all that sort of fun stuff further to the west. But over here is their current dead pile. I'm trying not to move the camera too fast because I don't know what the, the streaming quality is actually like with this version of this app. <clears throat> so one thing you'll note, there's no infantry on the map for the Germans, right? Uh, most of those forces come in on the 12th, on the second turn. So here's the 12th of July turn. And you can see 5th Corps gets a couple of infantry, infantry, bleh, infantry divisions. There's some uh, Panzer uh, uh, 24810. Yeah, that's going to be a Panzer Jaeger. Is that the right term? Probably not the right term. Anyway, there's a, a flamethrower battalion, more, more infantry units, uh, anti tank guns some artillery, some supply, and then down here there's a couple more divisions, and there's the Panzerlehr uh, recon battalion, and trucks and wagons with stuff. Already on uh, turn turn two, you're removing one of the one of the Stuka counters. Turn three, there's a, a lot more stuff that comes on as well. I'll show you the whole, the whole counter set for the Germans. There's a lot of divisions here. I don't know how many of them are going to end up on the board. And then unfortunately to you, they're going to be upside down, but I'm just going to hold them up so I can get them close to you. You can see this is the, the potentially the forces that will be on the map. Now at some point in July, yeah, some point in July, August, I believe, or maybe it's August, I think, August 19th, I think we start rolling for forces to be removed. Uh, well, that's sort of at that point when Hitler was apparently starting to meddle with the operational plan. So there's a lot of pressure on the Germans to achieve things very quickly. And if any of you play OCS you, uh, systems, you'll know that there are uh, nine turns in a uh, a month. So I just printed out a little turn track here, right? But there's you know, typically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine turns in a month. And hey, John, good to see you, man. Uh, Mike started. I would say that this is this is probably a, a, a good game to start off on uh, with a with a one mapper. It's got quite a few units on the board, probably a little more complicated in terms of decisions that you're gonna have to make, but Reluctant Enemies is another good one that everyone recommends and it was designed specifically for uh, beginners. And I've got the camera to one side, so it's kind of hard to see when you guys are posting comments, so I'll try and move this around. Hey, Uzi Patrol. Uh, so let's see, yeah, I wanted, so let's, so let's, you can kind of see that versus uh, say autumn for barbarossa you had a where you've actually got units right here and some across the river i believe ready to make you know uh, take advantage of the the breaching of the river and and the exploitation that comes after that and all the rest of it here you you really are set up with the approach to the main assault along this sort of defensive line as you can see, there's really not a whole lot here, right? You can see why historically, with the historical setup for Order for Barbarossa, that this was uh, an area that was a, a focal point. And we'll see what happens with our play, whether or not that uh, that pops up. Okay, uh, so let's have a look at the, the victory conditions and I'll read some of them to you or part of it to you. But first you can see I thought, well, let's just, let me show you. So control cities, the red, you know, these red uh, counters here, you gotta have control of some number of those, some portion of those, and I'll show you all of those on the map here. All right, so that's that section. This is way deep, deep, deep east. There's Roslov. Smolensk is here. Smolensk does not have one of those red red uh, doohickeys, right? 
So I was thinking, well, where, what are we, what are we supposed to be doing here? Uh, well, there are, I guess there's kind of like a, not an auto victory, but a, a final assessment, victory assessment that uh, works like this. At the end of the final turn, victory is based on control of certain cities and hexes. So you've got to have some of these ones with the red uh, counters on them. And you also have to have some of these green dudes. So the Russians get uh, benefit for controlling the far eastern end of the map, Rajev, Vyazma, uh, and one other one. And then seven of these little hex, these little these red counters I showed you. Sorry, I'm not being very articulate tonight, but that is what it is. Uh, I should be drinking alcohol instead of San Pellegrino. Uh, then the green hex, the green discs are uh, representative of the, for Axis win, they have to have Vitebsk and Orsha and Mogilev and all the hexes of Smolensk and six other units. See how I very cleverly put this prop here? So I remember. <laughs> so got to capture all of the, the green disc uh, locations and six of these locations. And the Russians have to have all of their red locations, which are the the two or three cities to the right of the screen, and then seven of the nine other hexes. Does that make sense? <laughs> Did I do a good job there? And then uh, there's an early decision check at the start of any turn after August 19th. The game ends if either player meets their condition for, the, for a decisive win. And that is the Soviets have nine of the listed hexes and the uh, Axis have eight of the listed hexes. Now, I don't know if that means this list of 11 or this list of 11 plus the, the red and green discs that, uh, that I showed you, right? Those two over there and these guys here. That's not clear to me. I don't, I don't know if that is the case. Hey, uh, Tony's Board Life. Tony, good to see you and Charles and everybody else. Just we'll some quick look at all the comments here. You guys are cranking it out, all right. Uh, no casualties do not play a part in the VPs for this game. And that's just the way it is. I have no opinion one way or, or another if that uh, is uh, a factor. All right, so hey, Braxton, what's up, man? Um, so it's pretty interesting. Uh, I'm gonna be curious as how how the supply is gonna work because we're really going to have to take care of this little section here to keep a decent supply route or or this this section up here we're going to have to <coughs> excuse me keep keep control of one of these two or three roads and rail lines we've got to convert rail rail lines by the way well that's one thing i haven't checked as to we'll see where the railhead actually mm -hmm. does go um and kind of go from there my wife is at the Janet Jackson concert tonight, which kind of pisses me off because I would have liked to have gone to that. And now she's texting me pictures. I'm just curious to see how just how big Janet's backside has got. Anyway, <coughs> so uh, <laughs> where were we before I talked about Janet Jackson? So I think the, the, the control of and the management of supply is going to be critical. It seems like supply is kept extremely lean based on the supply tables, which mm. I can show you here. Here's the, here's the supply table mm. for the mm. axis. You can see, oh, I'm killing my, I'm going to kill my wife. She's just stop it. Uh, I guess this is early. Yeah. Early and late game. You can see the die rolls. Uh, seven, so six to eight is average, right? So seven uh, SP early in the game is great, but then late game it gets down to three. Three SP a turn with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, there's at least, there's ten divisions on the board. There's another five to come on. Yeah, that's going to make life really hard. Whereas, you know, of course, the, the Soviet supply just goes off the chain. It's kind of crazy. Oh, Todd, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm used to being ignored. You don't understand. So I'm really walking through this for myself. It's okay. 
Uh, and anyway, Devon's desperate to get a date for ATS, so let's let him uh, uh, play his little pretend squad leader game. <laughs> okay, so so I think supply is going to be really interesting. I think the uh, clearly opening moves always seem to play a pretty critical role in a lot of these OCS titles. If you don't, you know, it's like winning GB2, uh, good answer, Blitzkrieg 2. If you, if you didn't reach Aurel uh, by by the end of the first turn and you weren't doing it right and all this sort of stuff, and if you weren't uh, ready to launch a major assault on Tula by, you know, turn five or six or whatever or four, then, you know, you got to, you got, so you got to know your game system fairly well to take advantage of it. Uh, I'm hoping that I'll be able to give this game a good run for its money. Typically what happens when I play OCS is is the defender usually gets his ass handed to him pretty handily because I'm a not a particularly good defender in the OCS system. But lately uh, I've been playing a couple of games on Vassal and that and I've been playing the defender just so that I can try and improve my my skill level there. And admittedly, I was playing against folks that were less, uh, way less experienced than myself. And that's not saying very much because I've probably only got, you know, 100 turns or, or 120 turns of OCS under my belt. So I'm by no means expert. There are folks that have been playing this these games for 20 years nonstop, right? Uh, so, so anyway, uh, I, I'm hoping that I can give this game a good run for its money. And and check this check this game out and try and see how it all hangs in there together and and see how it all works. Hey Chris, how you doing, bud? And that was you know so that's that's this is kind of the framework of what we of what we have to work with. The oh, I suppose the interesting reinforcements mm-hmm. for the I'm sorry, this text message is popping up. The the reinforcements for the Soviets. Uh, kind of more of the same. It's uh, a lot of 12 2 2 units, a lot of 11 1 1s, and a smattering uh, more of these sort of AT brigades and things like that. And what a fascinating battle. Uh, when I played the SES version of this, it all, it all, got, uh, it all got bogged down. You know, the Germans got sort of around here like this. They captured. Yatsebo, just here, I'm trying not to move other counters. They captured Roslov, Roslov, Roslov uh, down here, and we're having a fine old time, but could not reduce Smolensk. Just a lot of bad rolls, and then, and then there was a wave of, uh, a wave of um, Soviet air that kind of, kind of pissed me off and it was over anyway so we kind of kind of we I kind of let that go when I played it opposed I played the Russians and pulled back pretty aggressively and let the Germans dive in uh built a strong defense here and and had a this road just you know peppered with units so that there were no overrun breakthrough type of things going on and the same here was four deep here with units and that's basically all you got to do in that game to kind of bog it down this probably won't work that way because there's a lot more these units are a lot more fragile uh, and they should they should uh, they should explode uh, fairly quickly what according to the designer notes though uh, apparently it's incumbent upon the Soviets to do some counterattacking uh, to force the Germans to uh, use supply up defending themselves otherwise, you are going. You're going to allow the Germans to to accumulate too much supply, and they're going to have a, a better run of it. Uh, the, those attacks are going to be awful, and you're probably going to lose a lot of units, according to the designer notes. But uh, that's that's apparently what you need to do. So that might be fun, uh, rocking and rolling on some uh, some horrible attacks. I mean, can you imagine attacking with an eleven one one unit, even against a three, a three like a three five uh, eight or whatever? That's that's going to be a horrible, horrible attack, because you're going to be subtracting four from the die roll and four from the the surprise roll. All right, 
Or oh, red counters are the AT, uh, these guys, uh, NKVD. These are NKVD units, and they are not placed yet. I've got, to, I've got to position these guys. So these dudes and this SP have to go somewhere. Now, the cool thing about these two units in particular, I believe, is that wherever they go, they their AR has to be used, the four number, right? Uh, I'll hold this up for you. Right, that four number, uh, so we use that for the effectiveness rating or action rating of the unit. And they are also, there are no retreats, no matter what. Uh, and the first step loss is this unit. So a bit of a beat down, wherever they are, they're staying, right? And everybody else is staying for that particular attack until they're dead anyway. <clears throat> so they may, I'm, I may keep these for uh, area defense around Smolensk, I think. I'm not going to put them forward. I think it's probably better to use them back here. And then I'm going to keep, uh, probably, as I've been thinking about this, I'm probably going to keep five SP back here and build some hedgehogs around Smolensk and just make it a curtain of pain. Uh, you can only build hedgehogs up to level one in this particular game as well. So that's also different from most of the other uh ocs titles uh hedgehogs can right you know raise all the way up to four uh and hedgehogs give you some defensive benefits and, and impact the action action rating or effectiveness rating of the of the defenders uh and the attackers etc cetera, etc cetera. so all right uh bill yeah i'm take it easy man so uh that's that's kind of the the story um I don't know there's too much else to share with you. I'm happy to answer questions about OCS if people have questions. Not that I'm a a super, like I said, a super expert, etc. But there you go. I see people are already answering some of the things that uh, folks were asking. Oh, uh, where is the Luftwaffe? Okay, yes, the Luftwaffe is there. So there's the German Air Force. Uh, pretty powerful. That uh, pile on the right are all the Messerschmitts, all the 109s. And then you've got the, the uh, Stukas on the right and down the, in the middle, and then some transport aircraft. Um, this is a, a, a limitless dump, a supply dump. So I intend on flying extra supply into a base, air base, as soon as I have it, so that I can uh, uh, supplement the, the supply of the German forces. I think that's kind of a, a nice little hack that you can run here. And we can kind of see how things go from there. All right. Uh, is there something different about eye supply in this version? Yes, there is. So that is one of the neato little rules. So, and this is now an optional rule. And all the games uh, can be back uh, refitted or, or retrofitted with this, I should say. So there's these supply cages. And the way these work, they work different for different sides but basically you can either use this unit for a free uh, there are two things you can do and let me just put this make sure i put it correctly so for artillery specifically this allows us to pay for a 2t attack so two t's worth of artillery firepower which can be added to or supplemented by additional tokens additional supply tokens and what that also allows you to do is to take a 30 factor unit or a 20 factor or 24 factor artillery unit or whatever the case may be and use a portion of that equivalent to those two two those two t or 4t or 5t or whatever it may be and use a, a proportion or a portion of the firepower and conduct an artillery assault an artillery barrage once you've used that it's gone and it goes into the into a pool and i believe they they come back in some way, shape, or form uh, as a special replacement. If you roll a certain number, there's a asterisk on the replacement table or something like that. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, f I forget what it is. I can't see. The, I can't see the table from here. Um, but we'll. There might be another die roll that we need to make the, to to work out how that works. But that's basically it. So that's what happens. Now the other thing you can use them for. I probably should stop shaking my hand while I'm talking. Uh, the other thing you can do is place this supply chit, just uh, supply case chit, anywhere. Yeah, thanks, Tony. Uh, you can place this supply chit on any HQ, so this HQ here. If he was out of supply, and the first turn that he was out of supply, 
all the dudes within his supply throw range could be deemed to be in trace supply so they don't go OOS uh, straight away. So it's a pretty powerful but not plentiful tool. So the Germans, for instance, start with two of those. The Russians start with three. Oh, no, actually, they start with two as well. And it allows, it's going to allow you to conduct some artillery barrages because, let's face it, that's very, very difficult for uh, the Germans to choose to use artillery, particularly when you have flying artillery, right? I mean, <laughs> it's way cheaper to use air. Uh, than it is to try and use artillery and get them in the right place at the right time and move them into range and all that sort of fun stuff, then pay for the attacks. So uh, I think that's the premise behind all that. All right, I said I was going to talk for about 30 minutes and I probably had nothing meaningful to say 10 minutes ago. So let's uh, kind of wrap it up there. I appreciate everybody checking in. If you do have questions or comments, uh, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll, I'll shut up for a minute and you guys can pop them out and then we'll go for it from there. And I'll wait 20 seconds and then I'm going to turn this off. <laughs> Todd, you're funny. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. You have a good one. How do I stop this? Yes, there we go.